thanks everybody for staying with us. So uh, first of all, I wanted to go back to Mr. Petridis and um, it was great to hear um, your updated forecasts on growth and unemployment and so on, and also your, your expectations about when the, re the economy would recover and the bounce back next year. Um, can I ask you just about um, uh, the deficit, what fiscal deficit you expect in 2020, um, given these growth forecast uh, revisions? Um, so just to get some idea of um, the sort of deficit you're expecting and the increase in government debt uh, in 2020. And um, obviously, Cyprus did have a very uh, generous uh, package or series of packages, as you mentioned in your opening uh, remarks, but it, it's going to cost uh, the state uh, quite a, a lot of money. Um, and do you see that being a constraint then going forward in terms of um, providing more support for businesses and households, um, you know, through the winter and into uh, 2021, um, or do you think the government's quite well placed actually to 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 manage that? And I guess the related question is about the banking sector. This is one of your three pillars: the reduction in MPL levels. And we're pro a lot of progress has been made already, um, but it's still a significant burden. Is that going to hamper uh, the government's efforts? Just to get some sense from you of how you see. Um, the out the budget outturn and, and and what's the dynamics with government debt and MPLs and so on and how that's going to influence um, the recovery in Cyprus. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would say that um, we should always design policies within our means, and when it comes down to fiscal stimulus packages, they should never put at risk the overall fiscal sustainability uh, of the country. Uh, and this is why uh, at my early intervention, I, I did underline the fact that uh, the fiscal space we had created uh, in the past seven, eight years was a catalyst for allowing us to proceed uh, with a very bold uh, fiscal stimulus uh, package that basically rescued the economy during 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 this period, for 2020, uh, I would expect a budget deficit uh, uh, equal to about 4.5 percent, uh, which is not uh, catastrophic, uh, it, it, and it is quite manageable. Uh, we have deliberately increased uh, uh, public debt, uh, but uh, we have uh, liquidity. Uh, ranging to around 20% of our, of, our, of our GDP. And uh, before the end of the year, uh, the, the public debt, which is about 120% of the GDP right now, uh, uh, will, uh, will start uh, a downward, uh, having again a downward trend. So I think it is quite manageable. We are very careful in, uh, in how we proceed with our fiscal policy. It is within our fiscal space. And we always have at the back of our mind uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that this, this, this pandemic is characterized by a huge degree of uncertainty. So, yes, uh, we should have the means to intervene, more targeted, of course, to a lesser extent in 2021. Uh, but um, uh, I think we are, we are keeping the balance and, uh, and we are quite, quite happy uh, about wh how things are turning in regards to the, uh, to the prospects of the recovery. Uh, now, regarding the NPLs, uh, there, was, there was big progress in the past, in the past years. The, the, the NPLs, uh, they, they were reduced from around 50% to, thir to less than 30% of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the total loans. Uh, um, now there was um, a freeze uh, in the procedure in the for foreclosure procedures uh, in the past in the past months because of the pandemic. Uh, nevertheless, I must underline that we are not renewing uh, the public uh, memorandum for uh, the suspension uh, of the payments. And one of the reasons is that uh, uh, having studied in depth the, the situation. Uh, 
both by the Ministry of Finance but also by the Central Bank of, of, Cyprus, of Cyprus, shows that uh, the ability to pay is there. Uh, so uh, I think that we, we do anticipate that the pandemic will not have a catastrophic effect uh, or will not, will not uh, lead to a surge uh, of the MPLs uh, in the future. But of course, as I said before, twice, uh, the situation is uh, in uncertain and you, and you should always have uh, our, a careful eye on how things develop. Thank you. Thank you. Well, certainly if the budget deficit comes in um, around that level, 4.5% of GDP, and growth comes in, um, well, or, or the contraction in, in Cyprus is as you uh, project that would be that would make Cyprus one of the best performing probably economies in in Europe in in, in 2020. So let's hope that turns out to be the case. Um, uh, just a couple of questions have come in um, for some of the other panelists, and so bear with me and um, uh, to put some of them. So I guess this one is is um, relevant for Mr. Filiopoulos, who I, I believe is still on the line. Uh, and Mr. Papathanasis, um, which is again just looking at the uh, EU funds and the role of the EU funds. I guess um, one thing that we've heard quite a bit in recent weeks, um, I mean, this goes for Cyprus as well, of course, is that um, this unprecedented um, funds, you know, very large sums uh, which will be available to Greece and Cyprus are going to be a game changer in terms of bridging the investment gap, public investment gap, I, I, I guess, which has been problematic, certainly in, in Greece in recent years. Um, but is that the wrong way to look at it? Do you think that actually the emphasis should be much more uh, on looking at other kind of avenues um, of investment and you know we've heard different ones from Mr Bollock and uh, others but do you expect FDI um, uh, to take off I mean you, you you sounded very positive about the prospects and um, also that it's not um, investment interest is not confined to one or two sectors but seems to be quite broadly based so I'd just like to hear a bit more about that the kind of how you, how, how you look at the kind of role of public investment and the EU funds and um, the kind of broader uh, business environment and it's the potential for attracting FDI in a way that hasn't really happened, hasn't really taken off in Greece in recent years. So over to, uh, over to you, Mr. Filiopoulos, do you want to start? And, and, and then I'll turn to the alternate minister. Uh, I think that... Uh... Uh, the minister should, uh, Minister Papathanasi should uh, answer this question. Okay. 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 Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Hoy. A very interesting question. Uh, well, um, as, as I said before, um, FDI was uh, quite low. Um, uh, the reason was quite low was that. Uh, uh, relatively to other uh, EU member countries, was that the country was not attractive. Uh, we had a country that was not attractive to investments because of a very have a, a, a hard uh, bureaucracy that would um, delay all investments. So, as I said, this uh, we've been changing continuously. And um, as Mr. Filiopoulos said, and uh, in uh, your uh, your previous question, uh, we have not seen an investment to be seized or to to stop uh, proceeding uh, during the crisis. So we we see that there is a complete uh, change in the in the uh, view uh, of uh, Greece uh, as a country of possible uh, investment from uh, from uh, other uh, from, for, from investors. Uh, and of course, we are working on that, uh, trying to to create uh, or give more tax incentives. Uh, we are continuing in reducing bureaucracy. As I said, we are changing completely uh, our uh, digitization uh, program uh, on the public sector, making things much uh, faster and easier. 
uh, we enhance uh, drastically technological uh, mechanism, digital technology and uh, uh, other measures that will make things much faster. Of course, as I mentioned before, the judicial system, and uh, we are reforming that. And uh, another issue that uh, seems to be on the Greek, uh, on the Greek side is that uh, we do have a lot of uh, STEM graduates. And uh, this is something that's very attractive for companies, especially in, uh, in, um, in DG and uh, innovation. Uh, you know, it, it, it is very attractive. Uh, to set up the innovation hubs here. Now, um, I, I think you you mentioned uh, uh, about uh, the investment and uh, how we will manage uh, uh, the and how we'll um, run rather uh, the the investment procedures. I think we are changing completely also. Uh, um, all the uh, laws uh, pertaining to um, PPPs to make uh, things much more attractive and much more faster. And uh, also we are changing the law uh, for um, public procurement and public works uh, to, to uh, give uh, the opportunity for, uh, for the uh, projects to start uh, much faster. So um, actually uh, there's a big change happening. It hasn't stopped as uh, Mr. Filiopoulos said during the, the, the COVID crisis. And we are very, um, um, we are looking very uh, focused on the, the demands of the investors. And uh, we see a lot of uh, things happening, as I mentioned, uh, from investors from Israel, uh, USA, uh, and uh, other European countries. So in that sense, we are very, um, uh, hopeful that uh, things will go uh, the, the proper way and the RRF fund uh, will be uh, able to assist in, uh, in creating a, a cyclic um, uh, economy uh, based on the value chains that uh, are our main target for, from EU uh, strategy as it was announced in March 2020. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Mr. So, um, and Mr. Filiopoulos, if you want to uh, jump in as well and add anything, um, please do so. Um, I've got a couple of final questions. I'm just turning back um, uh, to you, Mr. Volk, looking at this kind of broad um, uh, discussion of um, various, you know, investment streams. Um, how do you think um, your um, migration, investment migration program is going to be a positive factor in Greece um, and Cyprus in, in, in the next two years and, you know, this kind of recovery phase from the COVID pandemic? Yeah, I think, um, I think both, for, in both countries' sake, these, these programs will um, play quite an important role. So. The pandemic has already had an impact on both economies as it has all around the world. Um, in 2019, if you look at from a tourism perspective, which, which is where uh, a lot of the impact of the pandemic will, will take place, the, the tourism directly contributed to about 23 billion euros um, to Greece's economy. In 2020, that revenue is understandably fall is just sort of 20% of that amount. So, so tourism takings from abroad uh, are not expected to top six to 700 million euros um, in the next couple of months through to December. Uh, the silver lining would come in the form of investment in the, in, in the golden visa program if we're talking about Greece. Uh, indeed, while Greece has lost an estimated uh, 156 million euros in golden visa revenue so far this year, the program is um, sure to rebound once travel bans are lifted and, and even you know, across our offices around the world, we can see uh, interest and uptake in, in various programs and particularly these uh, Mediterranean based investment migration programs is picking up. I think at that point, it will also be more enticing for investors as, as property prices will likely still be on the low side, um, but of course, destined to rise. 
Uh, and then when considered in conjunction with, um, you know, the Greek government's non-DOM program to attract wealthy individuals to reside in Greece, um, its strategy to enhance real estate and other related sectors through various tax initiatives, which Cyprus um, has also introduced, uh, there's also in Greece a draft law proposing a, a flat income tax rate for foreign retirees who transfer their tax residence to Greece. I think it's clear that that these um, that this golden visa program uh, is an important element to what will what will have to be a multi-pronged approach to attract the the much needed foreign direct investment. Okay, thanks. So we've got to draw to an end, but I just want to finish with uh, conclude this panel. Um, with the final question, so Mr. Green, um, the emphasis emphasised that particular slide and of the ten points, um, uh, the one that you said was most important was the commitment um, point. So, do you see a commitment here in Cyprus and Greece um, to change, to invest in innovation? Uh, do you think the pandemic has been an accelerant of of change in this regard? Um, for Greece and, and, and Cyprus. I mean, this question, it's not just for you, Mr. Green, you can tell me how you think uh, Greece and Cyprus are placed um, in, in this respect, but for any of them to um, jump in and answer this. So, Mr. As Green, maybe... As far as I first. know, I, I, as far as I know, I see uh, quite a lot of interest and uh, really doing things in the right direction. But I think that uh, we have here uh, people that are from the from the ground that can tell us uh, more, uh, and uh, if they want, they can uh, share about uh, their activity um, with this respect of innovation. Mr. Petridis, did you want to minister? Did you want to yes, say I something? Mean, if I was, uh, if I could, I was going to intervene. I would say that um, actual innovation and the startups are a new sec sector for Cyprus. A few years ago, I wouldn't expect that we could have improved so much. Myself, under my previous uh, hat, when I was deputy minister to the president and we were trying to look what is happening worldwide. We, I, I, I did visit Israel and um, we took lessons from Israel and we made uh, a modern legislative fair framework regarding startups, startup visas, regarding attracting uh, innovative companies, having certified in uh, innovative companies. And uh, in a few years, I was amazed to see uh, a startup community with young people flourishing and attracting slowly, slowly foreign direct investment. At the same time, we saw universities, newly established universities, uh, becoming first at EU level in, 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 in attracting funds, uh, horizontal funds from the EU uh, for, for inno innovation programs. So I would say that um, innovation uh, uh, is part of sustainability. And as policymakers, we have to equip it with the right uh, supervisory and legislative frameworks and the incentives and take lessons from people who know and countries uh, who are ahead of us, li like Israel. And this is one of our major efforts uh, as Cyprus. It's already working. Within uh, in just a few years, but the prospects are are, are great, uh, and it adds up to what they are trying to to, to 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 achieve: sustainability, an economic model based on sustainability and talent. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that we are out of time. We've run over our time quite a bit, and um, I'm I'm going to be running into the next uh, session. So I'd like to thank all of you. I think we've had a really um, full discussion. Um, thank you very much for your contributions. It was really interesting. I think everybody listening will have learned an awful lot. Um, so thanks again from on, on behalf of The Economist. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.